Hi, this is a video in the Emacs Tapas series. The crash course episode, we looked at starting Scratch Emacs, and we're going to look a little bit more in depth at the same thing. So, why would you do this? You do this so that you can test things, so that you can run things in isolation from your normal Emacs environment. Uh, the way to do it, we showed, was to make a directory first for the Scratch and then um, refer to that directory in the home variable for Emacs. Uh, I keep my Emacs in bin Emacs. And so if we start like that, then that kicks off an Emacs here. And uh, this is an interesting Emacs. The trouble uh, with this though is that there isn't any um, of my normal config so normally I use marmalade and this is just Elpa um, so that's not terribly useful um, so what's a way around that? A uh, way around that is to have a default file um, here's mine which establishes sort of standard setup for your Emacs. So let's just take away the Emacs test directory and make it again. And now we'll pass this Emacs, this default file. Uh, and now if we list packages we should be able to see Marmalade as well. Prove that L nodes only available in Marmalade, so um, there we go, and they'll be getting all those all those cool Marmalade packages. If we close that down and run the same Emacs, we should get Marmalade still because we've configured it. So let's go look at that. Um, we created a dot Emacs. And you can see it's got a package archives set here. Let's go look at that default file in Emacs. And we can see that what it does is it um, causes the package archives variable to be updated. Customize set variable um, updates a customization variable. Also turns on show paren mode and saves the customizations. So that's what we're looking at here we're looking at the save customizations. So anytime we start this Emacs with that home directory it'll be the same setup and we can write a list here and we can see that we get um, show paren mode working as well. This is so useful in fact that I actually have a shell function to do this for me. Um, here it is. Fake Emacs makes an Emacs directory and then starts it. Oh, yeah. This is my path to my Emacs directory. So we can say fake Emacs um, my screencast test minus L default L and uh, for some reason Emacs has started it elsewhere but there we go and we've got a default Emacs which is very useful um, it's uh, what we could do as well of course is delete that um, fake Emacs directory after the Emacs closed or something like that but it's often quite useful to have that hanging around and you can go and poke about in it and, and have a look and see uh, what initialized if you were testing package installation or something like that for example. Um, so that's the end of this screencast about more in-depth scratch Emacs making. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.